So uh, in this video, I'm going to go over the uh, the Python Autograd library. This is just a, a library that I happened to come upon in a paper I was reading, and uh, and I really I I just really found it fascinating and and uh, and useful. It's very practical. So um, this video is not going to be technical in any in any way. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of the Autograd library or anything like that. It's more intended just as kind of a motivator of uh, kind of showing what you can do with the Autograd library and perhaps why you should use it or give it, give it a try if you're a student in uh, machine learning or, or if you're just playing around with neural networks as I do, uh, you may find this library very, very useful. So what is Autograd? <clears throat> Autograd is just a, it just extends the concepts of automatic differentiation to arbitrary Python code. And what that means, and it's right there in the documentation, is that you can define a whole bunch of numerical operations in uh, in Python, and Autograd will automatically differentiate those operations for you. And the way that you do that is you you provide it a a scalar loss function, so just a you know one dimensional value that is the kind of terminal or terminus of all of your calculations and so on, your forward calculations in a neural network. And, uh, and, and again, as long as those operations terminate in a scalar loss function, the kind of classical model of machine learning, you provide that loss function to Autograd and it will return you a function for automatically calculating the gradients of all of those arbitrary operations. So. So why is that cool? Well, if you've ever tried to derive um, uh, gradients, you know, numerical gradients by hand, you know what a mess it can be and how, in, in my experience, just how unreliable a lot of the resources are for doing so. It is a really good exercise to do that, but um, but nonetheless, you do <laughs> sometimes you do get a little tired of it, and it's nice to have a library that can just do that for you, and it really does open up just some interesting opportunities to what you could do with a library like that that uh, automatically differentiates things. So in this video, I'm going to show just the output of running an example. I had to fix the Autograd example. And in this example, you're gonna see the uh, a neural network that is trained on its own source code. So it's going to be a character predictor using one hot encodings and here it goes. So um, as you see here, this is just starting up on the left side. This is directly from the, uh, the Autograd examples. I had to put some put some code band-aids in there and write my own log sum exp function, if you know what that is and all that. But uh, but as you see here, it's training on its own source code. So the source code on the left, on the in the left column there, is the training data. And on the right, that's what our predictions look like. And as you see, we've already kind of converged to the kind of look and feel and form of the source code itself, just using character prediction. So... So the number of classes in this model, this sequential model, is about 128, of which you probably use only like 60 or so characters. But uh, but this thing is just doing one-step prediction over that output space of you know multiple classes. And as you see here, it's converging. I do some mouse movement on the screen to highlight like the uh, the loss function at the top there, and then a a particular print statement that really shows when the the algorithm has converged to something reasonable. So you you will see the uh, the print statement, which I kind of highlight with the cursor, um, starts to look like almost exactly like an actual Python print function, which is very very neat. I mean, if you look at the output of this thing, it's a uh, it's pretty neat. There's also a gradient explosion, which we may have already passed, that you can see in the uh, the loss value at the top. It increases and it'll come up here at the end when I plot the loss, and there it is. So that loss function right there, or excuse me, that uh, that, that that spike is the uh, the gradient explosion that happened, and there you see some output of the. Uh... So having seen what Autograd can do for character prediction, uh, I took the same model, and this is to highlight how useful and easy to use this library really is. I took the same model and converted it to a completely different recurrent ne neural network for predicting, uh, or excuse me, for for modeling sinusoids. So it's basically, it is a, uh, excuse me, it's a, a stepwise real valued predictor. So this thing outputs just a real valued uh, value. So it's just a, a regression model, but it models the characteristics of sinusoids. And I fed it just a bunch of sinusoids 
just really basic ones. And, uh, and this is what you get here. Uh, again, this is directly adapted from the, the character model that was provided by the Autograd examples that I just adapted. And this output is not a training example. This is the actual output of the, the method once it goes into generation mode and you kind of just let it run on its own. And it looks very much like a sinusoid. And let's see, this next one here, I, I thought it'd be interesting to include some kind of degenerate outputs of this particular network once it was trained. And you can see how this one behaves and kind of goes down to the range of zero to negative one. You can tell that that's very characteristic of neural networks, uh, the kind of the, the weight model. If you know, if you've ever done like the XOR kind of example when you're learning about them, you can kind of tell why the weights might converge to something like this that that suddenly collapses to a smaller range. And likewise, this example here where you have this amplitude that kind of blows up and uh, it, uh, it doesn't blow up, it, it goes to some point and then it looks kind of like sinusoid. So <laughs> these are just, uh, again, some interesting examples, maybe like one out of five or one out of 10 of the generated uh, sinusoids uh, look this way. So, and here's uh, one more coming up. There she be. So this is another kind of degenerate one. And this is just to highlight the kind of instability characteristics of neural networks that they occasionally exhibit this pattern. Now this model was not like optimized and uh, it didn't go through a lot of model selection. So, so that's probably why you're seeing this kind of stuff, but it is a property of recurrent neural networks that you see strange like instability problems such as these, so. So those were some examples of what you can do with the library. And uh, and yeah, I think that's very cool. The, uh, the sinusoid example, which I adapted from the Autograd uh, character prediction example, or rnn.py in their examples folder of their repo. <clears throat> the, uh, the sinusoid model, that, that only took like two evenings to write and would probably take you much less time. I just have, you know, work and time constraints and so on. But within those constraints, using... Uh, Autograd, I was able to quickly cook up a model, a model like that to, uh, to model uh, waveforms. So that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, it just shows how practical the library was. And I was, really, uh, I was really excited when I found this library. I actually thought it was new. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link to the, uh, the paper that introduced me to it. And it's a very interesting paper about another application of Autograd and this this library. And again, what's cool about it is that you can define an arbitrary sequence of numerical Python uh, operations, you know, mathematical operations, matrix multiplications, even code loops and things like that. And Autograd will automatically differentiate it. You know, it will provide you the gradients of your your code, which if you haven't learned about Autograd and automatic differentiation and reverse mode automatic differentiation and those kinds of concepts, I highly encourage you to, to learn about them and to explore them because it is a really fascinating topic because, again, you can define completely arbitrary operations and then, you know, get a gradient for those operations. And the, the gradients, of course, provide the parameter updates to your model. So you can just you know, do some arbitrary, crazy operations. I mean, within reason in some principled way, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you can define some crazy, complicated forward, you know, pass in a neural network or even maybe something more complicated than that, where it's not forward. It's something like an echo state network or who knows what, I don't know. But, um, but this thing will give you, it will provide you the, the, the gradients of all of your, your code and so on. And uh, that really introduces a whole new kind of concept for coding up neural networks. And this is not, it's not really new. It's just new to me. And that's why I like it. I'm so excited about it. But, <laughs> but, uh, but this whole idea that you can, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole process of going through, you know, architectural development in machine learning, learning and deep learning, neural networks, and all of that is just a search space a search over that space of architectures. Well, with a, a library like Autograd, you can, I mean, you could, you know, loosely speaking, you could in some way do a principled search over a space of models in some, in some constrained fashion. 
in order to find models and architectures that best suit a particular problem. And uh, and that's a really neat concept. It's pretty it's pretty far out and abstract, I admit, but it is it is neat. And 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 not only that, the the library simply makes it very very easy to do to calculate gradients and things like that for the reasons I mentioned before, which is it's it can be somewhat hard and error prone to code up uh, and even just to hand calculate in advance the the gradients of even something as simple as like an Elman network, a quote unquote vanilla recurrent neural network or something of that form. And, um, <clears throat> and autograd just does that all for you. If you've ever been through that, that experience and pain, the pain is that the, the, so many of the resources out there online and so on are so inaccurate. And I don't know, they're, they're very just kind of fashionable and flash in the pan. And you, you end up in that wilderness of data science, hell <laughs> on the internet, <laughs> which we all know and love. And this is a library that can pull you out of it. And also like in contrast to um, to libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow, uh, Autograd is just much easier to use. Now, no doubt, I, I mean, I don't doubt that PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow are far, well, uh, frankly, they are far, far you know, higher performance libraries for doing a neural network development and so on, especially because they can compile to a GPU if you just, you know, it's just like one instruction and they can do that for you. But uh, but nevertheless, it's really nice to have a tool or a library like Autograd that allows you to do research in just native Python code. It really just makes kind of neural network development feel more like Python again. You're not having to use all these complicated uh, built-in classes in PyTorch or TensorFlow and all of the weird idioms, especially in the space of recurrent neural networks, I find the most complicated part about them in most libraries has nothing to do with the networks themselves. It has to do with the data representations of training data that you have to go through. And it's very convoluted and difficult to understand and you just get lost in it after a while. But, uh, but with Autograd, it's much, much simpler. And of course, as you saw in this video, the examples in the repo uh, are are very uh, well, very complete. They have almost every kind of you know very very popular mach machine learning algorithm or neural network model in their repo, and you can just go grab the code, and you can just bootstrap from it. If you have a project that you want to test out a neural network on, you can just go grab an example and. Even if you need to adapt it to a different domain, as I adapted this language model to the a completely different space of models, which is real valued kind of harmonic, uh, you know, domains, as you saw with the sinusoid. So, um, and again, yeah, that was just a basic Elman vanilla neural network, you know, adapted directly from the Autograd library. So uh, yeah, hopefully this video just provides some background on Autograd and why you should be interested in it and consider using it. And uh, and yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was a bit motivating and uh, helps you get through all those terrible, terrible data science blogs that are out there. <laughs> Feel free to message me or anything like that or leave a comment if you find any, uh, I don't know, any use or anything of interest in this video. Or if you have more technical questions like uh, with regard to gradients or anything like that, I'd, I'd love to attempt to answer them. <laughs> but um, but uh, I do hope in the future to make a, uh, a video about uh, deriving the gradients of uh, Elman networks. But we'll see. It's all time permitting, and I don't really have a lot of time now, so we'll see. But uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Now get out there and write some code. Get off those uh, social media sites and get off the YouTube and do what you know you need to do. Go write some code and, you know, have your way with a whiteboard. <laughs> have fun. Take care. Woo!